<laughs> Thanks for having me. Thanks for the presentation. So as uh, Justin said, um, I'm from France, but I've been living in San Francisco, Silicon Valley for the past 10 years. And I am very excited to be with all of you today from all across the world. Uh, that's something I, I really enjoy. Um, so today I'm going to speak about something that you may never heard of, which is the fourth industrial revolution. And so how you as a learner can basically be efficient and, and strive in this type of, of um, society. So before I get started, I will speak a little bit about Holbert and Justin uh, covered the basis. We are training software engineers across the world uh, with a methodology where students learn by um, working on projects in groups. So we have no formal lectures, we have no formal teachers, you learn by doing. Students come from all walks of life. Um, we have people who are just out of high school, people who used to work in other careers. We have former taxi driver, cook, yoga teacher, artist, who end up working for the best tech companies in the world, like Facebook, Google, Tesla, Apple, you name it, all of them. We started in San Francisco in 2016, but since then we have uh, been expanding in the world. Today with 14 campuses in nine countries. We hope to come near your place soon if we are not there yet, uh, including uh, Jamaica. So before speaking about the fourth industrial revolution, let's speak about the history of education. So centuries ago, the only way to get an education was to go to the people who had the knowledge, right? And this, the first university started with monasteries where you had monks and people would travel great distances to go there and listen to the monks lecturing them. Eventually, perhaps they could learn how to read and access the library. And that was basically how you would get an education and access to knowledge was the main issue. But since then, our world changed a lot. We went through the first industrial revolution. You may have studied this at school. The first industrial revolution was when we discovered steam, which power mechanization, we were able to extract the coal from the earth. We are able to build the first train and uh, railroad. It was really game changing for our society. And this is what education and school look like at the time. You can see on the picture here. And then we went through the second industrial revolution, also very exciting time. We discovered uh, the gas, we discovered oil, we discovered electricity. We were able to build the first engine. And so we could build plane, car, we build the first factories. Um, and we also build the first telegraph and phone line. Also very exciting time for our world. And here you can see uh, you know, how school looked at the time. And then we went through the third industrial revolution. That's our time, my time. I'm a little bit older than most of you here, uh, but that's where we mastered the nuclear energy, nuclear power, um, and where we had a lot of electronics. The first computer were created, the internet was created, and we were able to go to space um, and you know a lot of exciting, very exciting things. And this is how education still looked like. And now we're entering the fourth industrial revolution. So the fourth industrial revolution is a convergence of everything that happened before, and mostly the internet, computer, electronics, with very new technology like IoT, artificial intelligence augmented reality. We mix all of this and we are creating a lot of virtual worlds. Today we are in one, by the way, we are all meeting in this virtual world that is impacting our real world, our life, where we live, our communities. And this is still how education looked like. So what's the problem? What's my point with that? I didn't want to bore you with history. I really wanted to show you that our world really changed from the time where we are extracting coal from the ground and trying to create power and get electricity. And today we have this crazy technology, virtual world, but our education hasn't changed. And you'd be like, yeah, Sylvain, you know, 
education hasn't changed, but it's fine, right? Like it worked for centuries. Well, wait a second. The fourth industrial revolution is way different from the former revolution in the way that the pace at which our world is changing is accelerating. It's going faster and faster. Back in former industrial revolution, people had time to see the change coming. Years, decades, right? So they could retrain and retool and find a place in the society. Today, it takes years, sometimes months, right? We just saw that with the pandemic, a lot of the workforce going, on, uh, going online, that happened in a fraction of a second. And so while the main issue to get an education was access to knowledge, which is why historically, the regular format of having the teacher that you can see in the middle of the screen, mastering the knowledge and then delivering it to students, it was appropriate, right? Because the teacher were the only one, or the monks, you know, back then, were the only one who could access the knowledge and share it with the students. But today, this is no longer the case. We have access to a lot of knowledge accessible at our fingertip, fingertips, excuse me, on computer, on smartphone, people around you. And so memorizing knowledge is basically something that robots are very good at, or doing repetitive things. And so we should not teach, and you should not learn to become robots because the robots are gonna be better at it. I don't know if you've heard of Jack Ma. He's a very um, extremely successful entrepreneur from China, he created Alibaba, and he used to be a teacher and he's really into education. And he's quite afraid of the state of education today compared to where is our world. So I'm like, okay, that's the problem. So now what, what should I do? So access, um, access to knowledge is no longer an issue, right? You have library, you have your peers around you. Uh, as one of the former speakers said, you can reach out to your community on whatever social media or chat app you want. Uh, your teacher are also here to help you, of course, but the internet is, became the most important source of knowledge. We, are, we created, we have access to more knowledge that we'll ever need, that was ever created. And so it's really up to you to, to own your learning experience, to use all these resources so that you can be the one teaching yourself. The key for you is to be able to master this ocean of information. When back in the day, access to knowledge was an issue, today there is too much knowledge out there. So you need to know how to write the right Google um, request to get the information, to understand what information is wrong or right or in incomplete. I'm sure you've heard about fake news. Fake news is something that is written on the internet, but it's not true. It's extremely hard for us as humans to be able to process that. We think, oh, it's on the internet, it must be true. No, that is not the case. So we are really stepping into a new era, a digital era, where you as learner, as citizen, as future professional, you need to be able to master that. You may have heard of the World Economic Forum. Um, if not, it's okay. It's an organization that is gathering every year in Switzerland. Um, it gathers um, leaders from companies and government, and they come together to basically kind of brainstorm and see where our world is going. And they came up with a prediction of the skills that the workers will need in the fourth industrial revolution. These are the five skills. You can see them in the screen. Be able to pro uh, solve a problem, to have a critical mind, to be creative and to have people skills. Not that there is not, you know, memorizing knowledge, quick note. So let's go over some of the skills. What does it mean as a learner? What's your responsibility to be able to learn the skills? At school, in mud school, the way it works is that we will give you the solution by giving you a lecture, the teacher is gonna give you um, you know, tell you how to do X, Y, Z, or how this works, or perhaps you read, read a book that's gonna give you a solution. And then you have the exam, right? So you need to show that you understood the solution. 
through the exam. But all of us, we want to become professional. We have a goal in life, right? Whatever it is that you want to do in your life. And so you will work for a company or create your own company. In the company world, in the real world, we give you the exam. That's why we pay you. We give you work, right, as a professional. And it's up to you to find the solution. As you can see, it's reverse with what you are doing at school. So you really need to understand that an exam is something that is, it's not because you do well at the exam that you understood. You really need to make sure that when you learn, you really learn it for you, you understand it, you just don't, you know, do the exam and, and then you call it a day. Remember, all the knowledge that you need is around you, whether it's the library, whether it's your teacher, it's the internet, it's your peers, it's accessible to you. Another thing that Justin mentioned is about the people skills. In regular education, we may tell you, don't help your classmate because helping your classmate is cheating. Well, in the real world, when you help, and here it's not classmate, actually it's coworkers in the second line, it's called collaboration. In the company, the way a company works is when you have all the employees working together. Therefore, helping someone else is absolutely necessary. And actually, we as humans are achieving great things when we work together, right? As a society, as a group, that is why the human race is ach achieve all these things that other animals cannot do because we are able to collaborate between each other. So remember that when you are alone, yeah, you can go fast, but if you do it with other people, you can achieve great things. Finally, the takeaway that I want you to remember from this session is that because the world is changing, you also need to change, you need to adapt. And so you cannot think at your life as, I will learn at school some skills and these skills will be enough for me to have a work all my life. It's not gonna work this way. You will constantly need to retrain and retool so that you can you know, keep your job or grow in your career. And so there is a great saying um, which says that if you give a man a fish, you feed this person for a day, but if you teach a man to fish, you feed this person for a lifetime. It's the same for education. If you can learn how to learn, whatever you want to achieve in your life, you'll be able to go on the internet, go to the library, learn, learn whatever you need to then achieve your goal. So it is very important that you consider yourself as a lifelong learner, and you can learn in many, many different ways. That's something that one of the former speakers mentioned. We don't all learn the same way. So take the time to understand yourself and become a lifelong learner. Thank you. Wow, thank you so well. Okay, I'm just gonna get straight to the clapping because that, that was an amazing presentation. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sylvain, for that. That wow. <laughs> um, my major takeaway be a lifelong learner. I don't think a lot of persons think of it that way. Okay, let me just go to school, get this degree, and leave. But to emphasize the idea that we always need to be continuing to learn and to grasp new skills and to grow and develop. I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I love that. I can see that we're definitely having an amazing time in this session. So kudos to um, everyone that is here with us.